So when it comes to building an email list, utilizing your website to do so, an opt-in form is essential to solving that problem. So an email list is extremely important for any type of online business. Even if you're not selling something, having a list of prospects or people who are interested in what you do is essential. That way, if you ever do decide to monetize or if you ever need to make an announcement or something like that, having a list of email subscribers is going to be endlessly helpful and useful for you. So the number one way to do that, utilizing your website itself and the current traffic and people who are already visiting there is creating an opt-in. So this is just gonna be a form somewhere on your website, specifically somewhere prominent, that people can simply fill out their first name, their email address, sometimes just their email address, hit enter, and then get something of value from you. So typically what this is called is a lead magnet. It's something that is going to incentivize people to actually give you their email address and to get them onto your list. So there's a number of different things that you can create. You can create an ebook, you can create a PDF, a video, a course. There's endless options for things that you can create to offer a value. The number one thing that you wanna do, first of all though, is to determine who your target market is. Who's your ideal customer or your ideal reader? Who is that person and what are they interested in? Then you wanna create something that is going to solve a real and specific and tangible problem. It's gonna solve a problem for them through your lead magnet. Now, what I typically like to recommend, most people just like to throw together a quick PDF of some things that they could have just read on their blog, which you can do something like that, great place to start. However, when it comes to creating something that's rightly designed, I like to create a lead magnet that is so high in value that it is normally something that someone else would actually charge for. So that's a good goal to shoot for. But let's get back to opt-ins. So an opt-in is something that we wanna place somewhere prominent on our website. Once we've decided who we're trying to reach, what we're creating and offering for free, we wanna make sure that that is nice and prominent. So one of the things we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna go through and I'm actually gonna show you some tangible examples of some different opt-ins across the web, who's doing a good job, what they're offering, where they're placed, so you can get some ideas on how to more effectively manage and locate and place the opt-ins on your own website. So let's go ahead and jump into those examples. Okay, so now let's take a look at some examples of good email opt-ins, where they're placed, what they're offering, and just, just take a look at some of the examples that we have here today. Okay, so this is the Speaker Lab, and this is put on by someone by the name of Grant Baldwin, who teaches speaking, and here's his front page. So see, it's got a nice uh, tagline here. Of course, it's got his navigation at the top, which works well, but he's got a nice big red button right here, which makes it about as clear as you can possibly get. You click the free training button, and it takes, him, takes you over to a place where you can sign up for his free training. But the great thing about uh, this particular layout is that if you, and this is something I like to test from a usability perspective. So if you want, pause this video, uh, look away, and then look back at this form really quick for like a half second or a second or at this page. What you're probably going to come away with, the thing that's gonna catch your attention is this. So this is key, placement is key, color is key, but again, front and center, uh, nicely placed so it's it's easy for people to see. What you will find here and some of the others is that it's a button that links somewhere else. It's totally fine. Sometimes it helps to have the, the form in line, but that's a good example right there. Goins Writer, so this is Jeff Goins. He's a writer and he is a podcaster, published author, um, best-selling author. I actually really like this one because he just has a spot for an email address and send me it. So here's his headline. I find this, it works really well because it's nice and simple to the point. It says, hi, I'm Jeff. Can I send you something? And then it's, uh, you know, just his email address. Very personal. When you're building a personal brand, having a personal touch to it works really well. So if you fill this out, he'll send you the free resources. And then below that, it's got a little bit more about Jeff. And then you can read the blog and buy the book. What I really like about this is that he doesn't just point you straight to his blog and, you know, count on you finding this form, he puts it front and center so you can't miss it. That's essential when it comes to, you know, placing and locating uh, your various email opt-ins. So here's another example right here. If we jumped into one of his pages, you'll see at the top, he's got a nice call to action, but he's always got different places throughout his site where you can opt in. 
Another good example is Michael Hyatt. So Michael Hyatt has, you know, it's got his tagline, it's got information throughout his site. But what I like about this, and there's tons of things that you can subscribe to uh, in terms of his podcast, you can take a look at his various products, but he does a really good job of highlighting his opt-in as though it were a product. I really like this because it's just, it's an ebook that he's giving away for free but it's highlighted on the same level of other things that he is offering in terms of paid products. So you click on this button and then it takes you to a place where you can fill out your first name and email and then get access to his opt-in. Another one that does a really good job of this, I would say, is Ray Edwards. So Ray Edwards is another personal brand site. And so what he's got front and center on his front page is a call to action it's got a picture of him, it's very personal, but what I like about this is the whole thing is a button. You can click on this and it takes you directly to his opt-in. In addition to that, the far right hand button, which is usually the one that is most frequently clicked in a user interface, is a button to the same thing. So again, it's not interrupting anyone, however it is repetitive in the sense that you can't really miss it. In addition to this, if you click, if you go to a piece of content that Ray has created, you'll be able to see that button is up there again. And then a thinner version of that hero image, very clickable, uh, is there as well. Again, strategically placed throughout. The whole idea here is just assuming that people are busy or they're reading a lot of what's on your site, so it's easy to miss uh, what you are offering for free. So he's got it again at the bottom where people can click to get on to his free course. Another thing that's unique about Ray's site is that he's got a special welcome page that, uh, so if somebody has never visited rayedwards.com before, they're gonna be able to, they're gonna get redirected to Ray Edwards' webs, or his welcome page, which has a nice you know video in the background, and then it has a button to his call to action right here as well. So again, very strategically placed, doesn't interrupt anyone, and some great ideas for you in terms of some different places that you can add your call to action. Uh, Video Fruit is something that put, that's put on by uh, Brian Harris, and I think he's done a really good job of this as well. The reason I like to highlight what Brian is doing is that he's got a nice headline here. Want random people on the internet to buy stuff from you. It doesn't get more direct than that. I just love the clarity that Brian uses through everything that he does. And then there's just a button. This is start your email list. You enter your email address and you're on his list. He just does an excellent job, I think, of getting right to the point and making it super simple for people not only to get onto his email list, but to learn a lot of the strategies and tactics that he's using that has been working so well for him. Then he's got a nice uh, you know, a case study example here. And then again, he's got a separate call to action here, which as you might guess, gets you onto his email list as he provides value to you through that. Some of the ones that we've got over at Notable Themes, we've just got very similar. You'll start to see some patterns arising among a number of these sites. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it's working. So if you click this, it just pops up this really simple example. It's got a headline, a little bit of text here. Just enter in your email address. And one of the things I've liked to experiment with, and this is important, is the actual text that you place on the button. I've noticed that that can make a really big difference. And one of the things that has worked pretty well for me and a number of my clients is and this depends on what you're offering. I'm offering a full scale online course here, uh, but to get free access um, adds a little bit of scarcity to that particular item. Then at the bottom, we've got another, uh, a different call to action or a different opt-in, which is for a free toolbox PDF. And we've got many throughout here as well. Over at Rightly Designed, very similar again. It's a tried and true formula, it's worked really well. Nice, simple call to action, you click the button, it takes you to a little bit more information about the free course that is being offered. And then once you get over to that free course, you'll see here. Now there's some things to keep in mind. Uh, some people like to offer a button, some people like to do an inline form. I've tried both, inline form works pretty well. This one obviously is kind of a combination between the two, but you just wanna experiment with, with what is gonna work best. I've actually tried it again here. So this is the first, the primary call to action in what's called the hero area. But if you scroll down, and again, here's a, another call to action to become a subscriber, which again is free. But if you're, if you're scrolling through, what you'll notice here is I've also tried an inline form. This is the same course that's offered at the very top, but I do it again from a different perspective. So that's some of the things, something to keep in mind 
is that sometimes it helps to do a button, sometimes it helps to just offer the form in line along with what you are or with what's already on the page. Sometimes that can actually convert better. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Again, um, the more things you can offer, like again, we've got another one. So we're looking at, let's count the number of, of opt-ins I have just on my front page. One for that free course, two for becoming a Rightly subscriber. Uh, we keep scrolling down through some of the, the info. We've got, you know, number three, we've got another opt-in to that free course. And then I've got a fourth where people can get uh, take an ex assessment, which also uh, ask for an email address. So it's another opt-in. And then a fifth here again for free resources. So again, there's a lot of creative ways that you can add these. Actually, you know what? Let's pop on over since there's even more in here just to give you some more ideas. Pop on over to magazine. And if I pop on over to the magazine, what's interesting about this the magazine is essentially where I create and offer a lot of the content that I'm creating. Um, you'll see a different, a completely different ebook. I've noticed that people who are hitting this magazine page are more interested in the design side of building a brand. And so you can actually uh, download that directly here. E every post has its own different call to action. Um, and you see those all built throughout the site. So hopefully that just gives you some examples. Sometimes when you're stuck or you're not quite sure where to, to, to begin implementing your own opt-ins, it helps just to see some in practice and some, some ways that it is working and some ways you can apply it to your own site. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. One of the other questions I get from time to time is, what email marketing service provider should I use? So a lot of people like to start out with MailChimp and it's a great option because it's free. However, over time, you'll start to run into some limitations, specifically if you wanna tag or segment out your lists or start creating multiple opt-in forms. On the other end of the spectrum, I've worked with a number of different clients that really like Infusionsoft, but Infusionsoft is huge, it's bulky, it's difficult. You practically need to hire someone just to manage it for you. So I've tried as a person who builds websites and has done email marketing stuff myself for years, I've tried just about every single service under the sun. And my absolute favorite, the one that I have come back to, or I've come to and not, I'm not switching from <laughs> for anything because it has become so useful for me is ConvertKit. So ConvertKit is my absolute favorite, uh, specifically for creating opt-ins. So one of the things that's gonna make your opt-ins really effective is creating multiple ones over time and placing them in more strategic areas across your site. Maybe you have an ebook for productivity, maybe you've got a video uh, for you know, personal development or something like that. And you wanna create those in places across your site. Well, ConvertKit makes it extremely simple to create multiple forms uh, that people can fill out and place them on your website. You don't even have to create multiple lists in order to do that. You can just tag each person with a different tag depending upon which form they filled out. You don't have to worry about duplicate subscribers or anything like that. In addition to the forms, they also make it really simple to deliver your lead magnet. So in most email situations, somebody has to click a link to be confirmed to get on your email list. Well, ConvertKit doubles that link as a download link so that if you're offering you know an ebook or a video or a podcast whatever it is they click that confirm link then they instantly download whatever it was you were giving to them so it's just a great service it's tailored to bloggers and people who are running an online business again i've tried just about every single one under the sun either for myself or for my clients as i've been building websites and by far convert kit is my favorite. So as a watcher, as a, as a viewer of the of Rightly TV, uh, I actually have a special link for you. You can get a 30-day free trial if you would like to give ConvertKit a try. I highly recommend you at least give it a shot because I think you'll be blown away by all the features. So go to rightly.tv slash ConvertKit where again, you'll get a 30-day free trial. They've also got a ton of really powerful automation features. You can do sequences. Again, the tagging is amazing. So this tool, ConvertKit, has become essential to every part of my online business, and I want it to help you as well. So if you'd like to continue to get useful tools, resources, and other amazingly helpful stuff for your online business, go on over to rightly.tv slash subscribe and become a subscriber. I also appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. If you found it useful, scroll on down, leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts. 
and I look forward to helping you in the next video creating a brand that is truly rightly designed.